Hey, welcome to Frontline. Here are some of the best robotics and drones sweeping into the emergency services to save your cute little ass. Kick your Roomba to the curve and set your 5G microchips to fun. Let's go. Robots have already been working in the emergency service and defensive sector for years. If you combine their current advancements with our knowledge that natural disasters and severe stupidity are exponentially on the rise, then we can expect our demand for these little killbots to increase up to Skynet levels in the next few decades. Now, before witnessing the robots you'll have to fight off to save humanity, let's take a quick look into disaster scenes. And with that, it's only fair we discuss Florida. Here, universities have partnered with first responders to develop a system of unmanned aircraft to provide rapid response to flooding for the hurricane season. These drones will be stationed at energy facilities where they can be deployed out of their own fun-sized travel cooler immediately following a Florida man yeah. incident. They are able to withstand 150 mile per hour winds, making them one of the most rugged designs on the market, and they will contribute by assessing damage and giving real-time feedback to both repair and emergency crews, and all without their physical presence. The same high-quality drones are being used in other extreme environments to map out entry and exit plans for search and rescue crews. When every minute counts, it's invaluable to know the terrain ahead and what you're walking into. Meanwhile, on the ground, you can find this danger noodle. This guy was designed to fit into tight areas. Using its six cameras, including infrared, it can detect survivors as well as any gas or minute vibrations which let responders know how safe a structure is to enter. It's got more tricks than your dog and it won't accuse you of being a pedophile when you try to help. Eat this sucker into a cave or some rubble and let it get to work. There's a fancy compartment on the side that can carry critical materials to trap survivors, such as a tourniquet or perhaps some Skittles. The oceans are also a great place to use robots. It's dark, scary, and that's where sharks live. Remember those floaties in swim class? Well, they got a haircut and a job and are already saving lives as a high-speed flotation device. These ocean drones will not only slice through the roughest seas, but also Greg's chance of summer employment. Sorry guy, despite your impressive breaststroke, you've been replaced by a motorized paddle. The best of these amphibious robots are capable of traversing land, sea, and the most competitive dance floor. Fitted with cameras, these guys can map out cave systems or patrol dangerous riverways and maybe more. The design of the hypnotic fin on this amphibious Velox robot is designed to produce energy through its movements while also avoiding entanglements that might jam up other robots. Round one, fight! Meanwhile, in the aerial drone department, they finally accepted that most of their purpose is just dropping things further than we can throw them. Many of the world's most dangerous bodies of water are now utilizing detachable rafts in search of wayward surfers, overboard victims, and capsized ships. The sheer amount of area that these can cover is incredible, and they establish a quick bird's eye view of the search area, and that's invaluable following any incident. Centaro over here is from Italy, and his legs articulate over difficult terrain by rotating and extending motorized hips, knees, and ankle joints. Designed to be physically resistant to impacts, Centaro will be deployed into collapsed buildings where he can contort himself into multiple configurations to clear and bust up obstacles. I'd assume he probably makes a mean cheese pizza too. <laughs> many of these disaster robots remain rudimentary compared to our next entries. A higher level of complexity just isn't required yet. A claw and camera are the basics you need to open doors, crawl through rubble, and maybe poke a suspicious bag or two. Fire departments, on the other hand, like fancier toys and come with the budgets to play. Witness the bin fire the arch nemesis of firefighters everywhere. In the future, they won't even merit an emergency response. Soon, put out these distracting fires all without leaving your superset at the station gym. Meanwhile, by using robotics, it's gonna be Pat from the dispatch center who will nab that calendar centerfold when he launches another fleet of drones from a network of emergency stations at a moment's notice. They will be able to fly over traffic, enter a building immediately upon arrival, and use their sophisticated sensors to attack the source of a fire while scanning for survivors simultaneously. Then this die deck can be deployed to guide them out safely. But why stop there? We are using robotics to combat wildfires from the safety of the control room. A pair of drones can now replace multiple human teams while freeing up airframes to concentrate on water attacks using real-time drone feedback for greater precision. Afterwards, conservationists can use special delivery drones to replant the damaged area. This will be done in a fraction of the time it would take hundreds of tree planters and all without the smell. If a community was displaced, robotics are also filling that humanitarian role. Advanced home building robotics are incredibly efficient make very few mistakes, and can be set autonomously. The Hadron X is a great example. It's fed by a conveyor belt and set to build around the clock. 
It works off 3D models, and these machines are incredibly accurate and consistent in their builds without wasting any of the reusable material. Fun fact, traditional mortar can take days to set, but special adhesive used by the Hadron X dries in less than an hour. This makes him capable of building dozens of temporary shelters. And I mean, if we don't, who will? The church is not returning my calls. Okay, try asking any paramedic how they enjoy arriving at an apartment complex with a patient on the 10th floor. Ma'am, you were clearly walking when we arrived. Now you can't pivot your ass from the couch onto my stretcher. Well, we can now put these special friends on the hovercot and send them down in style. Whoop, looks like we forgot the stretcher straps. Ambulance drones with integrated defibrillators are set to launch from central sites across socialist European cities to those who suffer from cardiac arrest. These have the ability to hone into your cell signal and connect you directly with the dispatcher upon the drone's arrival. And I'm hoping the next models go a step further and place a mechanical arm with an EpiPen attached. Special mention has to go to Moxie the Robot, who will provide indispensable work in hospitals and community outreach centers. Can you imagine what this means? Close your eyes. Do you hear that handcuffed drunk taking up a bed in an overcrowded ER, yelling for another sandwich? No, you don't. Send in Moxie. Not this time, Satan. I'll give this next robot about 15 minutes after sundown until it's covered in big brain graffiti. Robocop here, actual name is now patrolling to monitor streets and provide a presence of safety in local parks. These giant phallic panic buttons are currently roaming California where they can scan your license plates, identify nearby cell signals, and use night vision cameras to identify you cowering in the bushes. Please help keep the park clean. Traffic stops are also a dangerous activity police have to perform. In the future, a non-profit institute intends it to be a police robot that notices the faint smell of pot coming from your car. This cop on a stick will allow police officers to carry out roadside traffic stops without ever setting down their coffee. It can scan your license and registration, provide facial recognition, and still feel threatened by quick movements. <laughs> Okay, Spot the Dog had his own Black Mirror episode which displayed a terrifying depiction of a future I hope never to encounter without a shotgun. EMS and fire versions are walking house kits. They carry equipment and sensors. But the police version is who we send to check out bomb threats and what that barricaded nut job is doing. Hopefully with the flashbang taped to his side. I'm holding out for a stair chair model with a bariatric seat on the top. Yeah, I'll take your orders now. Alright, this segues well to violence. We can't seem to develop something nice without wanting to attach a rocket launcher to it. And military developments have been funding robotic progression for decades. The US alone has budgeted 18 billion for autonomous weapons in the last four years alone. A United Nations report out of Libya has stated unconfirmed reports that military grade drones may have already killed a fleshy meat bag and without any assistance from a remote human operator. If true, this represents a historic first for robots on their way to domination. Weapons experts are already debating the potential runaway drone we could encounter if an unforeseen algorithmic problem is partnered with the ability to kill. As these advances continue, robotics will become increasingly more autonomous and soon, drones will even be able to launch from the palm of your hand. These will fly for hours and send all of your incriminating conversations directly to the Secret Service. I expect they will also be recklessly outfitted with a gun jabbar after the next engineer watches Dune. We are now on an unstoppable course to have combat robotics become a game-changing force multiplier while also offering a massive psychological advantage on any battlefield. We can all agree robots are pretty awesome, and I'm pretty proud that our species as a whole has largely prioritized human life, rescue, and function instead of mindlessly focusing on something we can just use to have sex with. <laughs> if you enjoyed Emergency Robots, you should check out Emergency Animals. Same idea, cuter concept.